So you've just got Pokemon Go, you've done a little happy dance as you caught your first Pokemon, and now you're sitting around thinking, what else is there? Well, the game is huge because it's literally our world. So certain shops become Pokestops, certain monuments and landmarks become gyms that you can battle at. In fact, entire bodies of water will house water Pokemon, whereas industrial areas and buildings will house things that would make sense being there. The thing is, Pokemon Go is a fully fledged Nintendo product, and as longtime fans can attest, the company are notorious for packing their games with far more than meets the eye. You'll need all the help you can get if you're going to be the very best like no one ever was. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 13 crucial tips and tricks for Pokemon Go that the game just doesn't tell you. Number 13, what the footprints mean. The icons in the nearby menu may look to represent popularity or availability, but they actually show distance from your starting point. Three is around 300 meters, two is 200, and one is around 100 or less, or whatever's right next to you. If you want to track a specific Pokemon, you can tap to do so. Just start moving in different directions and the bar will pulse it when you're facing the right way. Number 12, how to always hit with a Pokeball, and what the rings mean. Think of Pokemon Go's catching mode like paper toss with Pokeballs. However, there's far more going on than just swiping. In fact, the colored rings that pop up indicate just how hard or easy the creature is to capture. If all you see is a green ring, wait until it's smallest before throwing and you'll always catch your prey. Higher levels bring about orange and red rings, which mean you have to calm the Pokemon a little first, otherwise they'll break back out again. Purchasing or finding great or master Pokeballs give a greater chance to catching these higher ranked monsters in one throw, but you can also purchase or find berries that will turn their threat rings back to green, allowing you to snap them up with ease. Number 11, how to throw a curveball. Curveballs are worth more XP, but you naturally risk burning through your standard Pokeballs getting the curve just right. To do so, simply hold your finger over the Pokeball and make a rotating motion until it spins and sparkles, similar to how you modify items in Super Mario Maker. Once this has happened, flick to let it fly. You'll most likely miss, but take the direction the ball is spinning into account and you'll get the hang of it. Combine this tactic with a lucky egg to double your base XP and you'll be burning through levels in no time. Number 10, nothing tracks when the app is asleep. This may be obvious, but unlike basic downloads in other popular mobile apps, Pokemon Go's various systems like tracking and populating the world, hatching eggs by walking, etc. are completely non-functional when the app is inactive or your phone is asleep. The app needs to register where you are at all times, as the distance to every Pokemon is constantly being monitored. Turning the app off resets your starting point when booting it back up again, so always keep that in mind. All of this may make you think of preserving more battery life, in which case, number nine, what battery saver mode actually does. The most immediate complaint for Pokemon Go has come from the insane drain that it puts on your battery. As the app combines constant GPS tracking with an omnipresent service sync across the globe, you can lose an entire day's charge in around 40 minutes. Yes, really. Developers Niantic are reportedly working on a fix, but the included battery saver mode actually refers to the screen turning itself off whilst leaving the app running if you turn your phone upside down. The only practical use for this comes in sliding your phone into your pocket before walking. It will make a noise when a Pokemon is near or when you get in range of a Pokestop. Number eight, transfer your duplicate Pokemon for candy. Like the main games, across your travels, you'll come across a host of similar Pokemon, especially if you're grinding or farming a specific patch of land. Hop into your Pokemon viewer, pick a Pokemon and scroll down. From here, select transfer and Professor Willow will take the creature off your hands, returning candy relating to the family of Pokemon themselves. These candies can be used to force evolutions and increase combat power, which is the universal stat used in all gym battles. So even if you're laden with a ton of duplicate monsters, trade them in and spruce up your main team instead. Number seven, how to battle other players and become a gym leader. As yet, you can't actually fight other trainers in real time, but the nearest implementation comes from gyms. First, you'll need to be level five, and then you can either claim a neutral gray gym for yourself or head to a colored one, meaning it's owned by members of the three overarching teams, Instinct, Mystic, or Valor. Depending on how many real world people have staked their claim at that specific spot, the person with the highest combined combat power will be the default leader who you'll then face last with all the others being trainers that you need to fight on your way at the top. Note though, battles are not turn-based. Instead, you swipe left and right to dodge and can tap on your opponent in real time to do as much damage as fast as possible. If you win and are already a member of the team in question, you can deposit a Pokemon to help guard that gym. Number six, how to do special moves in battle. Everything that happens in these gym battles is building up your Pokemon's blue special attack meter. How many segments of that meter you need to accrue before activating their special differs from creature to creature, but you can view this on the individual Pokemon screen. You just might be able to turn the tables on your opponent at the last second, providing you know exactly when to counterattack. Number five, claim daily free items in the shop. If you've hopped into the shop menu from the Pokeball icon, you may have noticed the small shield icon in the top right. The number at the center is directly representative of how many Pokemon you have stationed at the various gyms around the world. It can be tapped once every 21 hours for a bonus of 10 gold coins and 500 Stardust. You're able to station up to 10 Pokemon at 10 different gyms, although that's a lot of battling. No one said the life of a Pokemon master was going to be easy. Number four, evolving Pokemon after being knocked out actually gives them full health. The fallout from gym battles is your team will most likely be left battered on the side of the road. To remedy this, Pokemon Go gives you a full health bar every time you evolve a creature, even if they're knocked out when it's triggered. Point being, don't ever waste unnecessary items to bring your prize fighters back when you could just plug the requisite candy and Stardust to evolve them and get an all new Pokemon instead. 
Number three, you can catch many Pokemon by standing still. Thank the Lord of Sloth for this one, as although Pokemon Go is built to get you out and about, thanks to the way the world is populated, standing still can reap its own rewards too. Developers Niantic have set up the world to constantly bounce off Google Map data and their own servers, meaning that walking and running will trigger various monsters as they're dependent on parts of the geometry, such as buildings, bodies of water, etc. However, precisely because of that load time and server catch-up, standing still can see any number of Pokemon within a short radius pop up anyway. The best way to play is walking a good 100 meters or so, then taking five minutes and letting the part of the world load in. Chances are a Pokemon will pop up at random intervals, so always take breaks in between bouts of adventuring around your local landscape just to see what's hiding. Number two, you can name your Pokemon. To do so, jump into the Pokemon menu, pick a monster and look to the tiny pencil icon next to their name. Tap it and you can enter anything you like, anything you like customizing your team as you see fit. The jury's out on whether expletives and curse words are censored for other players, but I've named a magic called Piss Lips for testing purposes only, and nothing's got in my way. Um, I did bag just to sort of like test it. Number one, recovering your data if nothing else loads in. This should hopefully only be for the first few rocky months as Nintendo servers do daily battles with the entire global populace of poker players vying to get and stay logged in. I've personally had the game crash multiple times, but when I booted back in, my character's appearance was the same, yet the Pokedex was completely wiped. Not good. All data is supposed to be saved to Niantic servers, or on Android or Google account. So in theory, your progress wasn't lost, merely unretrievable at the time of the server ping. Closing and reopening the app prompts a fresh connection to the server, which for me, restored all the data in one go. Hopefully if this happens to you too, it'll be just as painless as that to recover. Pokemon Go is a hell of an achievement no matter which way you look at it. So let us know in the comments if there are any other tips and tricks that you found that I missed out, or feel free to correct me if there's anything that I got wrong. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can find us on Facebook. I'm Scott from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.